Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on the Python series. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to use modules in Python. So before I continue this video and I show you how modules work in Python, I want to let you know that I actually wrote an article on my blog for this topic, so you can go check it out and read it if you want to. When it comes to learning new things, personally, I like reading it, so you may find this article helpful. It's a detailed account of everything I'll be teaching you in this video. So go check it out, link in the description below. Alright, so what is a module? You can think of a module as a bundle of code, in this case, a way of grouping functions together. You can also do things like put classes into modules, but we don't know anything about that yet. Um, so we're going to focus on functions for now. So right now, at this point in the series, we know how to create functions. We know how to make the functions do specific things. So if we have a bunch of functions that all perform a task related to one another, then we can group them together into a group of its own, similar to how a function will group together a piece of code. So you can think of a module as a grouping of functions. We've actually been using a bunch of functions that are built directly into the Python language, such as the print function, such as the range function, and then as well as all the functions that are tied to the different data types that we work with, such as a list or a string. And those are built directly into the language, so we don't really need to do anything special to be able to use them, but you may have not known that there's actually other functions that we can use that are not directly usable unless we import them. So I'm on the Python website right now. This will tell you exactly all the modules that exist in the Python language for you to use. So if we scroll down, there's actually one that you may be familiar with, maybe not. It's called the math module. So it says mathematical functions. So this is a module that gives you a bunch of mathematical functions. So if we're just going to click this, it'll tell us more about the mathematical functions provided in the math module. And this will give you a list of all the functions available in the math module. So um, truncate, remainder, um, exponent. So for doing exponents, logarithm stuff, square root stuff, uh, stuff with trigonometry, um, hyperbolic functions, special functions, a bunch of stuff that you may need to do mathematics in Python, right? So even though this module, the math module is, you know, part of the Python language, you cannot use any of these functions here unless you import them from the math module. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So let's just go and take a look at the other modules that Python provides. So we have one called Tkinter, which is for graphical user interfaces. That's pretty cool. We have one for time, for time stuff. We have one for, um, up, up at the top here, we have one for audio. This one's deprecated, meaning that it's it's kind of, you're not supposed to use it anymore, but it's, it's there. We have one for calendar. We have one for cryptology. We have one for colors. Um, you pretty much have a module for any basic thing that you would want to do in a Python script, right? So that's pretty cool. So as you can see, each of these modules have names like math, like audio, and you can expect that module could, to contain only functions that relate to mathematics or audio stuff, right? And again, that's the exact purpose of a module is to group together a bunch of functions that sort of go together, right? It wouldn't make sense if you group together a bunch of functions that don't go together. And so there's a bunch of different benefits of doing that, which I'll explain in a second. But first, let's just jump right into the code and see how we can import a module within Python. Now, I did tell you that to use any of the functions within a module, you have to import the module. Um, and there's different ways to do that. You can either import the function specifically or import the entire, mar or import the entire module. Uh, there's different ways. But let me just show you the most basic way, which is just to simply do import math. So doing that, will import the math module. So this means that you can then use the math functions within your uh, code here in your program. So now to call a function from the math module, we can do math dot, and it gives you all the functions you can use. So let's say that we want to do power. So power, P-O-W stands for power. So if you do control Q, it'll tell you what it does. So it returns X to the power of Y. So that's pretty cool, right? So you can either do that yourself by doing x and then uh, asterisk, asterisk y, or you can call the power function, up to you. But anyway, so to be able to use this, you just pass in two parameters, first the x and then the y. So we'll say two to the power of three, and then we're just going to print that out. So if we run this now, we should get uh, eight into the console, which we did, perfect. So first what we did is we imported the math module, and then we used a function available in the math module to do a calculation. Now power may be a little bit of a misleading 
um, example just because power is actually one of the built-in functions in Python. It does exist outside of the math module as well. If you do control Q, you have this available. So equivalent to blah, 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 but, and it still works. So if you run this now, you still get eight. Now you can use either this one or the one available in the math module. They are slightly different. So let me give you a different example. If you do math.exp and do control Q, this is returning E raised to the power of X. So let's see what that is. And you have to take away that parameter. It only wants one. So E to the power of two. What is the value of that? It is 7.3, roughly speaking. And if you take away math dot, this no longer works because this function is only available within the math module. The other one was available outside of it technically, um, but this one is only available in the math module. So you have to directly reference it from the math module. So math, the module name dot, and then the function that you want to use from the math module. So pretty simple, right? But that's how you can use a function from a module. So whenever you run your program behind the scenes, what it will do is essentially copy that function available in the math module that you're using in your program into your program behind the scenes. Roughly speaking, it will copy it from that module into your program, and then you're able to use it at runtime. Anyway, so when you do import and then the module name, this will let you use any of the functions within the module as long as you specify the module name before calling that function. Now, if you want to, you can actually import a specific function from this module if, if you know the name of it already. So if you want to do that, we can simply get rid of this and do from math. So from the module name and then import, we're not importing the module this time, we're importing a specific function from that module. So import exp or whatever function that you want to import. And now this will no longer work. You're going to actually, because math is no longer imported, now you can just actually just call the function as if it was already within your program, as if the function was defined in the program directly. So behind the scenes, when you run your program, it will uh, take this function from the math module and in a high level way, copy it into your program and enable you to call it and use it within your program at runtime. And obviously you won't be importing just one function all the time. So you may want to import multiple. So if you want to import the power function as well, you can do comma and then P O W if that's the one you want, or you can do the one for hypotenuse. You can add as many as you want for whatever functions you need. And then if you want to import all of the functions within the math module, you can simply do star. That will be sort of like a wild card that will tell it to add every single function from the math module into your program, okay? And so you can still use this the same way and you can use any other function this, uh, as well. So POW56, uh, print hypotenuse, um, and then it wants a series of coordinates, one, 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 two, three, blah, blah, blah. Now you may be wondering what is the difference between from math module import star and just import math. The difference is that whenever you do from math import star, it'll just take every single function within the math module and at runtime when you run your program, copied into your program, like I said before. With this one, you're importing the module and then every time you wanna use a function from that module, you have to specifically do math dot, right? And this, so in this case, when you do it like this, the only functions that will be copied into your program will, will be the ones that you're specifically calling. In this case, math.hypotenuse math.pow and math.exponent if we change it to that as well. Okay, so that's the difference. And you don't actually wanna do, and if we go back here, we don't actually wanna do from math import star, um, strictly speaking, just because it's not good to import a bunch of things that you don't need. So if we just go back to our documentation here and click you know, the calendar module, we have so many different functions here. And if we did from calendar import star, then we would be importing all these functions that we're not even using. That's pretty much a waste. We don't want to do that. And that's not recommended for these very simple programs that we're working on right now. It doesn't really matter. You can do that. Um, but it's not recommended to do that generally speaking, because that's, it just doesn't make sense to import a bunch of stuff that you don't need. And it's a waste of resources to copy all those functions from a different module into your program. So just as a recap, we now know the three ways of importing a module or different functions from a module in Python. So we know import module name, then we know from module name import, and then a specific function. So whatever is available in that. So. Uh, first weekday so that will give us that specific function for us to use and then we also have from calendar Import star for every single function available in that module. Okay Those are the three ways of importing either an entire module or specific functions from a module in Python Now I want to show you something kind of cool. Um, it's called aliases So you can actually give your modules or the functions that you import from a module a nickname 
So let's say that we want to again import the math function or the math module, right? We can actually do import math and, the, and then use the as keyword as to give it a nickname so we can say m. So now if we want to use the hypotenuse function for available from the math module, we don't do math dot hypotenuse, we do m dot hypotenuse. So print and then m dot hypotenuse and it gives you all the functions available in the math module. So now you can't use math anymore, you have to refer to it as m, which sort of makes sense, right? So that's how you give it a nickname. You can also do this for functions as well. So if we do from math import pow as p. Now what this will do is import the power function from the math module and then give the power function a nickname of p. So if you ever want to call the power function within your program, you can do p and then pass in five and seven if you want to and that will call the power function and whatever the five to the power of seven is, that should be it right there, perfect. Now the main reason you may want to do this is, well I, I can think of two reasons, is the first main reason is that sometimes the different names of functions that you have in your program may conflict with each other. As we saw, we have two different power functions available in Python. We have the built-in one directly, and then we have the one available from the math module. So if we get rid of this and just have power from the math module, now if we do POW, how is it supposed to know which one to refer to? Is it the one that's built into the language directly, or is it the one that's built into the language that, but is also a part of the math module? So there's sort of a conflict here in which one that which in which one should be used. So if we do two and five, now if we get rid of this and do as p, it still works, but it's calling a totally different function now. And then we can get rid of that, and now it's using the one for math again. So in short, the main reason you may want to use an alias for a function or a module in Python is because of name conflicts. And the second reason simply may be that you want a better name for a module or a function, a name of your own choosing, okay? Now the last thing I want to do is show you how to create your own modules. Obviously, using modules is great because it allows us to unlock a bunch of different tools available in the Python language and from other people as well. And you're going to be using other people's modules in the future. They're basically a big, a big part of Python programming. You're going to be using a bunch of modules that are not built into Python, but other people have created for you to use, such as machine learning stuff or just other stuff in general. Now, what I want to show you guys is how to create your own modules so that you can essentially group together your code into different pieces um, so that you can use um, wherever you want, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and create a new Python file. So new Python file. And what we're going to call this module is something like kitchen, kitchen.py. And the way that you create a module in Python is simply the same way that you create your program. You give it a file name that ends with .py because it's a Python file still. And you don't actually have to do anything like declare it as a module. You simply put your functions inside of here, which is pretty pretty sweet. It's pretty simple how, to, how, you, how this works. Now this is a module that we're going to have called kitchen. So you would expect it to have functions related to a kitchen, right? This is kind of a dumb example, but I've made a bunch of functions here that you can look at. Now this is a really dumb example, but it does illustrate how modules are groupings of functions that do similar things uh, that go together really. Uh, so we have a kitchen module and now we have print recipe, takes in a recipe and prints it out by each ingredient. We have cook recipe, accepts a recipe and cooks it, blah, blah, blah. And then we have measure liquids for measuring liquids. So now if we want to use any of these functions in the kitchen module, all we have to do is go back to our program file and import it. So now we can do from kitchen import star to import all of the functions in that module and then we can do what's a what's a function that we can use let's do measure liquid so measure liquid we don't need to print that out measure liquid and then we can measure what liquid do we want to provide um, just water so we're going to measure the water run it and it says measuring water very basic example but that's how you can create your own module and it's as simple as creating another python file giving it a name that makes sense, and then having a bunch of functions that also make sense for that module name. It's as easy as that. Now, what are the benefits of using modules in Python? These benefits are actually very, very similar to functions because functions are a way of breaking down code and then also grouping it together. So first of all, we have code reuse. We can reuse any of the module functions anywhere in different programs that we have. So we can utilize a bunch of pre-written code without having to write it ourselves every time. So if the math module did not exist in Python, to be able to do the hypotenuse, for example, you would have to write that function yourself. And then, you know, anytime you want to do hypotenuse, you have to call that function, which is simple enough. But the point is that 
someone out there, the Python team or whoever, created a module called the math module that has a bunch of pre-written code that works really well and then you can use it for free. That's the key idea, is that you don't have to write it yourself, you just have to know how to use it, okay? And so that's very helpful because now you don't have to write a bunch of boilerplate code for something so simple such as calculating a hypotenuse. It's already provided to you, you just have to import it and use it, okay? Now the second benefit is modularity, which we talked about before when it came to functions. And this one's kind of obvious now because modules and the word modularity, they're very similar words because modularity talks speaks about how there's different modules that you can draw from that have its own specific meaning or task that it does. So we have the math module, we have the, the calendar module, we have the time module. We know what each of those modules do without even directly knowing the implementation of those modules just because we know it's a grouping of calendar stuff, math stuff, time stuff, right? So the idea is that you're breaking down your code into different sections um, and you know where to find that code, you know how to use that code, um, you can import that code, and that makes your code and your, your language much more organized. And so the third reason is abstraction. So this is a new term you may have not heard before, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the next few episodes when we learn about object-oriented programming. Abstraction is the idea of using a module and a function within a module and not knowing exactly how the code of the function is. So you know that in the math module, there's a power function, right? You know exactly what the power function will do. It'll give you the power of, so if you pass in two and three, it'll give you two to the power of three. You know exactly what it's gonna do. You don't know how it's doing it. You don't know what the code inside of the function is, right? So that's the idea of abstraction. It's a black box. You don't need to know how it works. You just need to know how to use it. And this is really nice just because it allows you to focus on the task at hand, such as just whatever program you're writing without having to worry about how the math module is implemented. You don't have to worry about the details of the power function. You just need to know how to use it. And that's very powerful when it comes to programming, okay? And like I said, we'll talk a bit more about that topic in the future. It's gonna become very important. So stay tuned for that, but hopefully you understand now with the benefit of modules. I said a lot of words, you know, I talked a lot, but just know that really a module is cool because it's a grouping of functions that go together. And now hopefully you know how to use those modules, how to import specific functions from modules, how to create your own modules, and how to give them aliases. Hopefully you found this video interesting and thanks for watching. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.